Welcome. Today we're at Auburn University Montgomery's Wellness Center. Dr. Henry Williford has graciously agreed to provide the virtual field trip experience for us today. He is the head of the physical education and exercise science program here, and we thank you, Dr. Williford. Dr. Williford, we appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Tell us a little bit about the program here. Okay, uh, I'm the department head in physical education and exercise science. I've been here 30 years, and we started out in a little classroom. And so last year we came into this lab, and we have about a half a million dollars worth of body composition equipment here. And so I think you'll be interested to see the different techniques that we use to measure body composition and some really interesting ways to look at the ways to measure body, body composition. So, uh, Dr. Esco, tell us a little bit about your programs that are functioning here as a result of the center. Okay. Well, we have a number of uh, research projects that are <clears throat> taking place in the Human Performance Laboratory. Um, many of them uh, relate to uh, accurate methods of predicting body fat percentage in field settings. Uh, what, what we uh, specifically uh, do uh, currently are, are we're validating um, uh, uh, traditionally used um, field techniques that mm -hmm. have been primarily developed from, from groups of white men. And what we're doing with those techniques is we're taking them and, and applying them to different populations like female athletes, uh, African Americans, and, and individuals with disabilities. And, and one project specifically that we have is, is with Down syndrome. Dr. Green will now demonstrate the ease of use of the biological impedance machine. The first step is to obtain a height from a stadiometer. Notice the correct measurement technique. Biological impedance analysis works by sending an imperceptible electric current through the subject's body. BIA is based on two simple assumptions. Adipose tissue impedes the speed of an electrical current because it contains less water and electrolytes compared to lean tissue. Impedance to current flow is directly related to height and inversely related to cross-sectional area of the individual. BIA provides a measure of current speed resistance. The resistance is then used in a larger regression equation that includes height, weight, age, gender to calculate total body water, fat-free mass, and percent body fat. Most commercial models will calculate this for you and produce a printout with all this information. These newer models are based on much better regression equations than earlier machines. However, BIA accuracy is complicated by many factors, including heterogeneity in body compartments and ionic composition, influence of ethnic differences in body composition, age, gender, hydration status, food intake, exercise, certain medical conditions, skin temperature, hormonal fluctuation, and fat distribution pattern. Also, the equations are population-specific and may not apply to individual subjects of population subgroups. Some machines do include race as a factor in the predictive equation. Prior to the test, subjects must avoid alcohol and exercise. During the test conduction, subjects must assume a proper posture and have no metal objects such as belt buckles or coins in their pockets. Although this is a quick, relatively inexpensive field method for measuring body fat, it consistently overestimates lean people and underestimates obese people. The, the, tech, the BIA technique that you're going to uh, see now is uh, the hand-to-foot uh, BIA. And basically what this procedure does is it will send the current from the, uh, the poles that, or the electrodes that he is placing on the hand to the electrodes that he, are, that he will be placing on the foot. It will travel the, uh, the region of the body on, on one half of the body. Uh, this tends to be more accurate than either handheld BIA or foot-to-foot -foot BIA. And this is also um, one method that we can, that we can actually estimate uh, total body water to. It's a quick procedure once he gets everything s set up. I mean, the, 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 the test is quick. Uh, it takes longer to prep them. Yeah, so these are... Um, this is how the, uh, the, the device was validated, so we need to be 
we need to be sure that uh, we need to be sure that that we follow the proper procedures and which uh, uh, how it was was validated in the first place. And we have to if we deviate these electrodes in any way, we would not get an accurate reading. So Adam is is um, plugging in all of his uh, other variables related to height and weight and that sort of information. And then once he does that, it'll get he'll hit start and it will. Dehydration or or uh, overhydration will would affect the the readings, um, because again this this assumes that the person is in normal hydration, and uh, the speed of that current depends upon how much water is in the body. So how it will affect it relates to many different uh, variables, but it will cause a, uh, an inaccurate reading. If we were going to do this uh, for a research study um, and we wanted to be really precise, we would actually determine uh, bodily, uh, well, actually hydration with um, measuring. Uh, well, we can do it by the mouth, but more specifically with urine output with a refractometer, urine uh, specific gravity. Okay. Dom, what'd you get? DEXA, or Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry, is a three-compartment model for measuring body composition. It's quick and non-invasive. Newer machines can scan the body in five minutes compared to the older ones that took about 20 minutes to conduct a single test. DEXA works by measuring the body's absorption of X-rays at two different energies. Fat, bone, and muscle have different absorption properties. It's generally considered more accurate than 2C models. It doesn't require skimpy clothing and a lot of patient compliance and technical skill. DEXA can also provide composition in particular areas of the body rather than an overall estimate. However, DEXA results may vary by brand name of the, of the machine and by individual variances, including gender, body size, and degree of fatness, because these can all increase error rates. Software upgrades for a single machine can affect the algorithms that were used to predict body fat. 5% dehydration can produce a 3% error in estimate. The bottom line for DEXA is similar to other methods. Group results are generally better than individual measurements, and we've seen some studies for an individual DEXA can be off as much as 5 to 10%. Air Displacement Plethysmography, or ADP, is a two-compartment model of measuring body composition with a plethysmograph commonly called the bod pod. The procedure takes about five to, to ten minutes, and it begins with weighing the subject. It requires minimal compliance on the part of the subject. The basic principle behind ADP is that air displaced by a human in the chamber is equal to the subject's body volume. To minimize the effect of clothing and hair, subjects wear minimal, tight-fitting clothing with hair under a skull cap, and they're clean-shaven. Body surface area calculated from weight and height and thoracic gas volume must be taken into account. Steps of the procedure are as follows. First, the subject, as I said, is weighed and measured because height and weight are used to calculate surface area. The machine is then calibrated in a two-step method. First empty and then with a phantom calibration using a 50 liter cylinder. Next, the subject sits in the chamber and breathes normally for about 20 seconds. 
The door is reopened, closed, and the 20-second test is repeated. If the two measurements are within 150 milliliters of each other, an average of the two is used for calculations. If not, a third measure is made, and any two measurements within 150 mils are averaged. Pressure differences in the front chamber when it's empty and when the subject is present are used to calculate the subject's body volume. The thoracic volume is calculated by having the subject breathe through a disposable tube. This method is comparable to hydrostatic weighing, but without the discomfort of being underwater. So it can be used in children, elderly, and disabled subjects. It's accurate to within 3%, but the units are a bit pricey at $30,000 to $40,000. Results are also affected by hydration, and any slight movement can change the results. So measuring children who have a difficult time sitting still can be a problem. Failure to wear a tight swimsuit and skull cap can reduce accuracy by as much as 5% because of the heat trapped in body hair. And Dr. Michael Green is demonstrating the use of the bod pod. He's going to sit very still for about 20 seconds and get a read, and we'll repeat that measure. And um, this machine was calibrated prior to our arrival, so we'll not demonstrate that for you today. Hydrodensitometry is the precise term used for underwater or hydrostatic weighing. This method of assessing body composition is based on Archimedes' principle, which states that the volume of an object submerged in water equals the volume of water it displaces. So if the mass and volume of the body is known, the density of the body can be calculated because density is equal to mass divided by volume. Hydrostatic weight is a two-compartment model that assumes a hydration constant of fat-free mass of about 73.8%. It also assumes a density of fat mass at 0.9 grams per centimeter cubed and a 1.1 gram per centimeter cubed for fat-free mass. The density of water is generally one, so muscular people will weigh more when submerged underwater compared to people with a higher percentage of body fat. To calculate body density, weight in the air is divided by the difference between air weight and underwater weight divided by water density, and from that number we subtract residual lung volume and the volume of gas in the GI tract. Tear weights are added to the chair so that the weight of the chair is 3 to 6 kilograms underwater. Water movement can affect results, so the subject must remain still as possible. Prior to measurement, subjects should be several hours postprandial and have avoided gas-forming foods and carbonated beverages to reduce the volume of gas in the intestines. The subject exhales as much air as possible and is then submerged for five to seven seconds. This procedure will likely need to be repeated several times to get a true average. Net body weight in water is the gross weight in water minus the tear weight of the chair. Water temperature and density are estimated using standard tables. If residual lung volume is not accurately measured, hydrostatic weight is no more accurate than skin folds. There are several techniques for measuring the residual volume. If chemical methods are not available, residual volume estimate is 24% of vital lung capacity. Gastric volume is just about impossible to measure, so it's generally estimated to be about 100 mils in adults. There are a number of problems with underwater weighing, mainly the impracticality of the method. As you can see, this is a very large pool. 
It's based on assumptions that are not true across all individuals. It tends to underestimate body fat in athletes and overestimates body fat in elderly individuals. In spite of its limitations, hydrostatic weight remains the comparison standard laboratory technique for measuring body composition, and most all other methods of measuring body comp are compared against this standard. All right, so we're going to be uh, administering a skin fold test. Um, first off, we're just going to do a seven-site test, um, and uh, we'll kind of move through them and kind of talk about them, how to pinch and diagonals and stuff like that. So uh, the first one we're going to use is the chest here. Um, you want to grab on the males, you want to grab right between the, the armpit and the nipple here, and you want to do a diagonal pinch. Okay. Wait about two or three seconds, get a reading. Let go and do it one more time. And exact same there. All right, very good. So next we're going to do is the subscapular. So if we want to turn around, the subscapular if we is right here underneath the scapula. A lot of times if you can't find um, a good area for the scapula, we just have him raise his right arm. So just raise it up, and you can kind of see the scapula move, and then he'll bring it back down, and you can find that area where the bottom part of the scapula is, but he's pretty lean, so we can find it pretty good. So, again, this one right here, find underneath, underneath the scapula, pinch a diagonal pinch, same thing. Hold for about two to three seconds, let go, do it one more time. Okay, very good. All right, next one we're going to do is the tricep while he's standing back to us. Again, this one's going to be a... Um, a vertical fold, a uh, vertical pinch. So we're going to go um, mid part of the uh, the shoulder and the elbow. So right about in this area here. So again, a vertical um, vertical pinch. Wait two to three seconds. Relax. And do it one more time. All right, perfect. All right, next we're going to do is have, we're going to do the uh, mid axilla. So we'll have him turn around and face us again. All right, so here what we want to do is have him raise his right arm, um, just like that. And we want to go here from the xiphoid process all the way around. So we grab him right here. And this one's going to be a uh, vertical. Pinch just like that. Okay, and we'll relax. Do it one more time. Perfect. All right. Now while we have him facing us, we're going to do abdominal. So we want to go about an inch over from the navel here. Um, and this one is going to be a vertical fold as well. Okay. Relax. And then we do it one more time. Okay. Perfect. All right. Next we're going to do is the uh, super iliac. So we go right across the iliac crest here. Now this one's going to be a diagonal fold. We want to kind of go along with the, uh, the ilium. Good. Okay, we'll do it one more time. A good pinch there. All right, perfect. Now last one of the seven sites that we're going to do is the thigh. Um, so we're doing primarily the right side of the body, so we want to do the right thigh. So we're going to have him put primarily most of his weight onto his left foot and then just relax this leg and relax this muscle. So what we want to do is um, we want to go about mid-thigh. You can't hold that for me right there. So we can go about mid-thigh right here in the center, the hip and the knee, and just get a vertical pinch there. So two or three seconds. We relax. Do it one more time. We're good. All right, and that is a seven-site skin fold test.